Hello everyone um, and welcome to this month's Fredos webinar on beating the peak season blues. Uh, my name is Leora, I head product marketing for the Fredos marketplace and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. So just a quick run through on today's agenda. I'll keep this introduction brief because the clock is already ticking on peak season. Uh, I will introduce Philip and then he'll jump into his tips for avoiding the peak season pitfalls. Um, this is not just about saving money, even though that is of course important. These are ideas from a real industry expert on how to make sure your shipments literally don't miss the boat for peak season. And there's some great information, but we'll present it as concisely as possible so that we have ample time for your questions at the end, since that is the most important part. Uh, you can submit your questions at any point through the questions tab on your dashboard. So we will get to them at the end. Just if a thought comes through your head, uh, enter it there. Uh, so without uh, further ado, let me introduce our very own in-house freight expert, Freydos' VP of Marketplace Sales, Philip von Mecklenburg Blumenthal. We call him Dr. Freight because he literally has a PhD in freight rates. He also has nearly a dozen years in the freight world, mostly from D.B. Schenker, a top five global forwarder, and he knows all the tricks for navigating the freight world as easily and inexpensively as possible, even during peak season. Philip always tells us that as much as he loved working for D.B. Schenker, he made the, the switch because the shipping in industry was just really kind of stuck in the past and a little too manual. He wanted to be a part of the change the shipping industry needed, and Fredos was at the forefront of that change. And we'll talk more about Fredos later, but to quickly mention just how we're at the forefront of that change, that change a quick introduction for any new visitors. Uh, the Fredos Marketplace makes global importing easier and cheaper for thousands of small to medium-sized businesses. If you've ever booked a plane ticket with Expedia, then you'll get it when we say we're the Expedia for freight. You can search for freight rates, compare the best rates among multiple top forwarders, and then when you pick the right one, you can book it on site, upload your relevant paperwork, manage it, all in the same place. But like I said, more on that later. So without further ado, here is Dr. Freight himself, Philip von Mecklenburg Blumenthal. All right, thank you very much, Leora, and I'm going to show my screen. Um, just a quick check. Can uh, everyone, Leora, can you see my screen properly? Yes, I can. Perfect. Very good. So, uh, uh, going to the right stuff. Okay, perfect. So, thank you, Leora, and hello, everyone. I think that the the reason why there's so many people, and there's truly a lot of people here today joining, is is because everybody every importer into the United States faces the same fears every year. Will I be able to ship my goods in time for the biggest shopping reason, uh, season of the year? Will there be space on the ships, on the vessels? Will there be space on the plane? Will they arrive in time? And will I pay more, more, much more to secure the space? And the answer to all this is unfortunately yes. And I'll explain how and how we can circumvent this. But uh, before, let's give a little bit of background into what's going on in the shipping world during peak season, so that we truly understand what we are actually what we are actually talking about. Uh, before I do this quickly, some legal stuff. Um, all information used in this in this webinar is publicly available, um, and none of the information presented is any in any time privileged or confidential. Freitas does not provide any recommendation. She has any information on freight rate programs from specific forwarders, um, and um, uh, recommendations are general. And we advise that uh, um, um, we advise that. Uh, we advise that uh, any recommendations, general advice that we have, anyone specific in respect to their unique situations. All right, I'm just uh, getting the information here that my screen is partly black, uh, so I'm trying to save this here. Uh, one second, let me see if this is better, and I can move this here out of the way. So, all right, good. Um, Good. So let's go into the deep dive into the uh, uh, reasons, into the topics about peak season. What you see here is the typical development of um, ocean container import rates um, this year so far from China to the U.S. And the difference is that the orange is uh, the West Coast, so anything Los Angeles, Seattle, Long Beach. Um, and the blue lines are all east, co uh, east coast, up from Miami up to uh, the port of New York. And um, 
So freight goes through a couple of peak seasons um, every year. Uh, the two mains are now essentially from mid-August through mid-October and the preparation for holiday retail and then later on in January, February around Chinese New Year, which you see slightly here on the slide. Um, and, and so how do we know we are in peak season? Because of obviously peak prices. So the chart you're looking at shows the GRIs, which are the general rate increases that carriers have instituted. Um, throughout 2017. And so what exactly does the artist here of this chart want to tell us? Um, as you can see, the carriers try to push through price hikes throughout the year. And you, you see it every first of the week. Um, you see it here. You see it here on the 1st of May, uh, the 1st of July, the 1st of February. So they push through out the year, but they usually taper off by later in the month. And you see this classically here. Um, that's tapering off. You see it very, very good in July. However, in, a, in April, for example, we saw shipping prices increase um, here by 7.6% uh, before dropping to 4.8% and only a few days later and actually falling below the previous month's prices by April 10th. So the May, uh, in May, the GRI, that bumped prices up by 7.8%. You see it here on the, on the um, West Coast dropped just to 2.7% later on, increased by the end of the month. And even July, which many sources claim was the start of peak season, didn't hold its GRI for long. You see it started with a 13.7% GRI that was ultimately then reduced to 4.9% here um, at the end end of July, uh, but sorry, by the middle of the month. So, But the data from August has made it very clear you don't see the pattern following, you see that this climbing throughout the month. Here's a slight decline, but it's not like the same pattern which you've seen in the former, in the former months. So um, it shows us that the peak season has arrived. So for the first time this year, the price of shipping continuously increased as the month progressed, and those prices will likely continue to climb throughout September, even probably throughout part of October. So um, this is basically the structure within the year of um, uh, East Coast and West Coast rates. So let's take a look at how it compares to last year. So, um, well, July ended uh, with, uh, with 2017 rates about 2% two, two, uh, 2 under the, um, under the uh, rates from 2016. But the mid-August uh, 2017 rates, and you see this here, uh, you see here like the development, and here you see it in a, um, a little larger. Uh, the, the 2017 rates for August were already about 6% higher than the ones last year. And by the end of the month, the difference has already climbed. You see here a steep climb um, to 2018. So what we're anticipating right now is basically that the peak season is a little earlier on um, than compared to last year. Um, in 2016, you see a large spike coming in up here, the, the, the orange spike. And um, this is a uh, directly result of the Hanjin uh, crisis. For those who don't know, it's a, it's a Korean carrier that filed bankruptcy um, end of August last year. And then uh, there were a lot of um, freight and holdup. So um, that's basically the spike is increased because of this. However, we do not see that the rates um, uh, we do not see the rates are already at, a, at the heights that it was uh, bef uh, at the uh, after the crisis. So we do not see that the rates are going further down. It will probably hold up in this area um, throughout the, the 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 year. So so this is a little bit about um, that. Again, this is public information. Uh, the source is the Freitas um, International Freight Index. Um, it's not uh, confidential. It's fully uh, it's fully published for everyone, accessible on uh, Freitas.com. So let's go a little bit into the causes why uh, why this is peak season. Um, uh, and, and I mean, you, you can almost uh, assume what it is. So, well, the main reason is obviously demands, uh, starting with like back to school, which starts usually with an early peak season, um, then throughout Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and through those that last minute holiday sales that are onto it, 
we're, we are basically now in prime shopping season and everyone wants their goods on the shelves when the shoppers come running. So demand is the main driver. In fact, some retailers, the holiday season can represent as much as 30% of annual, annual sales. So importers aim to meet the demands of the customers and carriers aim to meet the demands of importers. So it's trickling down the entire supply chain. Demand is the main, main reason for it. But there's limited amount of resources to basically um, fill the demands. It doesn't help that, for example, um, Chinese New Year, a uh, Chinese national holiday starts at the 1st of October. So everyone who's importing, be mindful, there is a Chinese holiday coming uh, in the first week of October. It's called the Golden Week. And um, you will see that um, factories trying to rush out goods before the Golden Week or trash, try to rush out goods afterwards. There's very little production during the first week of October happening. Okay, so most likely the factories in China will be closed for a full week. Um, some don't do this, but um, a lot are doing it, and so it will be pretty busy. Um, also, I mean, everyone knows Thanksgiving weekend, especially uh, Black Friday sales, is probably the peak peak day um, for retail this year with the Cyber Monday afterwards. So um, at the moment already, uh, Maersk reports that their fleet is at 110% capacity, and we've already seen that containers being rolled because of co container uh, capacity. I want to add one thing here, is that the uh, rolling means that you have a booking on a, on a vessel, and the vessel carrier does not load your container, but rolls it to a week later. And that's mostly happening to those that have contracted rates with the carriers, um, those that are going for spot rates, um, you buy them on a spot, so you buy them based on availability. So the likelihood it's, it's happening to spot is there, but it's lower than when it is on contract rates. So with so much demands, carriers now basically can raise the prices and people will still be fighting for supply. So the question is, what can you do to make sure that your goods where they need to be when they need to be without paying astronomical surcharges? So let's go into some tips. Okay, so quick question to Leroy. I can see my screen fine. Yep, you're much better now. Okay, great. Now, um, before we start, I want to point out that while I stand by every piece of advice that I'm giving to give you today, peak season is a volatile time. And it's possible that something will throw a wench in your shipments no matter what. So since I'm speaking to a group, to a large group, uh, this is a very general advice that I'm giving here. You should always check your specific needs for your shipment, which is only you yourself can. We can give advice, but you know your situation best. So shipments get held up more frequently during peak season. Shipments cost more. It's unfortunate common, no matter what, but I can give you some advice and guidance to avoid these, these pitfalls and minimize the issues as much as possible. So let's start it very, very simple. It's incredibly important to prioritize what you're shipping during the peak season. Not all of your shipments are created equally, and if you have specific products that need to get in, in on time, maybe something with a bit more demand than your other wares, those need to come first. So prioritize, prioritize what you need to ship and communicate this clearly to the forwarder of what is more important than other items. So the simple reason is, with increased delays during peak season, your shipment can get held up, and if you ship over, uh, if if a ship is at over capacity, a container can get easily rolled, which means it gets bumped to a later date. Just repeating myself here. So first of all, tell your forwarder which boxes, containers, which items contain the higher priority of the goods. Forwarder will get some no some notice before a shipment is rolled, and it's possible that not all containers in the shipment will be rolled together. So, uh, so so. Um, basically, if, if, if they know what's more important, they can do their best to ensure that higher priority boxes or containers are protected. So the second thing is basically that you communicate clearly with the forwarder about priority shipments. There are a few other things that you can do to ensure far more care and attention is paid 
to your more essential products. What are these? First of all, make sure you approach peak season shipping, and it might be a little late already in the game for ocean, but at least for air shipment, make sure that um, peak season shipping, season shipping um, with a clear forecast of peak retail season will look like. Use your numbers from the last couple of years or what you're assuming, what you currently see trending to understand how much likely to sell and um, couple that with industry trends to determine which items are most likely to sell. So this will help you to understand what and how much you are going to import and then you're able to forecast and tell your forwarder about what you're shipping. This next advice is basically you can prioritize by delaying customization of your goods. So um, let's, for example, you sell purses as an FBA seller on Amazon and you customize those purses with different um, embellishments. And thank you, Laura, for this wonderful example. Um, so um, the embellishments are important, but they can wait until closer to, to sell date. You can do the customization, for example, in the United States. The purses are the key product and you shouldn't be, it shouldn't be rolled if it can be helped. So bring them over, bring everything else, the embellishments, everything else over, and if possible, customize in the United States. It might cost a little more, but therefore you have it in the United States and you can um, then act up on demand. So last try, uh, last then try to narrow down, down on what you're shipping um, by really, really focusing on essentials. So for example, um, instead of bringing dozens of options of your product with like unsell unproven selling power, in peak season focus on your core business, your core brands, your core product to ensure that nothing is left with un uh, with uh, with out of stock um, and, and and that might delay your shipments. So focus on your core core product. Okay. So um, this is basically the first. Uh, information about how to prioritize shipments um, and and so that you definitely bring them in into the United States. So the next the next topic we want to go through is um, now that basically um, uh, we want to go go through if you're sh shipping multiple containers, then if you were having uh, multiple containers or multiple shipments you might want to separate them from different bill of ladings and your forwarder can do this. So for example, care if carriers roll containers, they roll them or if they roll um, shipments, even if it's an LCL shipment, they roll them according to the bill of lading. They do not roll separate containers. However, if each container or each pallet has a separate bill of lading, it might cost you more in documentation. However, um, there might be shipments that get rolled and some others that go, don't get rolled, whatever can get loaded. So if you, instead of, um, you have this little example uh, here, if you have like, for example, five containers, bring every five con uh, of the five containers in with a separate bill of lading during peak season in order to avoid uh, rolling. In addition to that, um, specifically if you're shipping LCL, you should stagger the shipments to make sure that at least you have some stock at your disposal. So not wait until the product, full production is finished, but basically release the production bit by bit so that basically you can stagger it so that you will be, uh, you will be sure um, that like, at least some goods arrive um, and you, that you can sell instead of um, you waiting for the entire um, entire uh, load or the entire factory order. Um, so for example, you, what you can also do in, in regards to this is that you don't need to ship them all by the same mode. Here's this little example here. You have 100 boxes. You can send 70 of these boxes ahead by, uh, by uh, ship. And if you see that the demand is very high, you can either alternate sending 30 boxes by air. Yes, it will cost more. But I mean, at the end, you want to meet demand and you want to sell your goods. Um, and so if, you, uh, if you're running out of stock, um, the chances are that you get um, delisted for a while from Amazon um, or that you're dropping in the Amazon listing is, is high. So you don't, want to, um, you don't want to get into this risk. So think about splitting shipments uh, into different bill of ladings, splitting LCL shipments into different modes, at least stagger them in the shipment so that basically you're not waiting for the full, full production. So that's basically the little advice. 
um, a little bit more about still um, um, on LCL. Um, some carrier, carriers, um, uh, what they do is they have only weekly uh, departure for LCL, especially if you stagger, um, then it is that you catch different departures. Um, so you can um, at least be sure um, that you get a few shipments a little, a little earlier. Okay. The last advice that we have is that um, Amazon have a, has a, uh, in Amazon in the Seller Central has an opportunity to uh, has an opportunity to transship your shipments within the United States. It's the re it's it's um, I'm missing the word right now. It's not replacement uh, products. It's, I'm just missing this word right now. Um, ask me later on chat or or in an email. Um, what they do is basically that you Amazon offers that they um, bring the goods to different Amazon warehouses in the United States instead of you are bringing these goods yourself to the different Amazon warehouses in case they are asking you to split the shipment. So do not split the shipment if you're selling at Amazon within the United States. Give it all to the closest warehouse that to the arrival port and enable in Amazon in Amazon Seller Central that Amazon is taking care of the goods. It might cost a little bit more, uh, but on the other hand, you are free of the hassle of transshipping trans the goods within the United States. And secondly, at the end, if you try to organize yourself, there again might be something that um, is thrown um, at you and you need to handle yourself. So better have it in Amazon that you're quite professional in doing so. Okay? So, the next item here is, and it sounds a little um, counterintuitive, but I assure you it can save time down the road. Everyone is rushing to get their roads to goods overseas as quickly as possible. So, which means that a lot of people are um, clamoring for those shipments with the shortest transit times. Leaving shipments with slightly longer transit times prime, uh, it times prime for the taking. So for bottom line, if you're able to plan ahead sailings with slower transit times that are less likely to roll your cargo because they are less popular to take. Um, sounds uh, now hopefully a little bit more logic. So if you have a little bit more time, plan with longer tra transit times. Um, often it's, it's only a difference of a few days schedule. So for example, if you go to, um, uh, to the West Coast, you have a 13-day tr transit times. You can go to 15, 16 days transit times, only a few days. But these might be less, uh, might be the better option. At the end, if the port is congested, uh, obviously everything ends up there the same. But this is just an advice we can give you. Um, so, and like we said on the last slide, if you break out, break out a quarter of your goods to ship via air earlier, then you need a certainly lesson for that ocean shipment and you have inventory on the shelf, so that's likely worth waiting those extra few days. Um, so similar also if you want to consider alternative ports to maximize your options uh, where there might be less congest congestion. Again, this might mean a longer transit time, but it will give your forwarder more options to work with and routes can be uh, and a route can be built according around certain greater shipping capacity. At the moment, uh, this is a very general advice. It really depends on where you're shipping at the end, where your final destination is. So um, this is a very, very uh, general, general advice. Um, the most, most important one here on the slide is that you understand your cargo readiness. Uh, what does that mean is that um, often the factories uh, tell you the readiness is, for example, on the 10th of September. However, then when the forwarder checks in, comes back and says it's only the 12th and 13th. So stay in close contact with your forwarder of when the goods are truly ready and plan with this because we've seen it multiple, multiple times that the cargo readiness is not what you know, but later on only what the factory tells the forwarder and when goods will be shipped. Okay? So, um, two more uh, uh, two more items here. Um, the first one is safer shipments. So uh, you see here a nice ship, unfortunately got in a storm, and we're bracing here in Miami uh, currently for Hurricane Irma. Um, so uh, um, you will see this eventually, actually, on our website um, in our chatting function. 
that um, we have um, cust we have colleagues all over the world um, that will be able to assist you. However, we have a good team here in Miami, and uh, the Miami team will not be in the offices tomorrow and uh, on Friday because of Hurricane Irma. So you might see a slower response. I apologize for this, that we're not there as usually within 10 seconds um, at some times, especially when we get really, really busy. So, but nonetheless, we'll definitely take care of your shipments and uh, we will uh, respond uh, within the hour uh, to your, uh, to your um, questions. Um, so, um, that doesn't leave us with the question about what's happening if something is happening with, with, with uh, there's damage to your shipment. So, ship happens and it does and if your goods never arrive or are damaged during transportation you could be at serious loss because since ocean air carriers only provide a basic very insufficient rate level um, so that's usually at about two dollar per kilogram in fact if a ship runs on ground and then you become automatically a part owner if you've no clue what even the name of the ship is or you can in this case here um, uh, pronounce it uh, then, then still um, you will become part owner of this of the ship, and um, you are up um, for uh, for paying for the entire recovery of um, this vessel. Um, so, so you want to be in, in 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 short. Insurance is usually comprehensive cargo insurance, usually very cheap. Um, it's about around sixty cents for uh, sixty cents for every hundred dollars, so zero point six percent of insurance. And so it's not super material, and you should only accept comprehensive insurance. Um, it will keep you covered, and it's worth the outlay, especially during peak season. If anything is happening, uh, you should get um, insurance. So let's focus here a little bit on the um, last tip, um, perhaps the most important one. Through all the decisions you're making about peak season shipments, um, uh, you need to know how to prioritize your shipment, even how to acquire insurance. You need a partner you can trust. So having a reliable forwarder doesn't mean that you know your shipment is in good hands, though that it's undoubtedly the biggest, biggest benefit. So it can actually affect when your shipment moves. Many forwarders book contracts with different carriers and then pull out last minute when they find a better price. In fact, about 25% of ocean bookings are canceled during peak season in this pattern. So carriers don't love that. And if they see that forwarders have canceled a lot of bookings with them, they won't allot them any space anymore. So you need to be able to trust your freight forwarder. So you want forwarders, and also that that you want to be open to yourself, and 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 that offer you different different options um, to choose from. So diversifying your options, um, and if it doesn't provide you any options, diversifying your diversifying your provider, like have a few shipments with this and a few shipments with the other, is good because they all have different carrier contracts. So, but ultimately. Um, your partner knows their stuff and they can make decisions happen. So uh, very, very important is, is that you can trust them, you can, uh, they offer you different options and if they do not offer you different options, then please diversify yourself and go with different, different forwarders. Okay, so I think you all know where I'm, I'm kind of going with this. One place where you can find multi providers, um, all of them are reliable and knowledgeable, is the Freitos marketplace. So uh, Leora mentioned this uh, briefly before, but I'd love to take just a minute to talk you a bit more what we do and what Freitos is doing, how we can make uh, importing easier and exporting and cheaper uh, for you guys. Um, we are not a freight forwarder ourselves. We're somewhat like a kayak for freight, kayak the side where you book the flight. Uh, we're a mar freight marketplace where, where, where you guys, um, your importers or exporters can compare the quotes among different freight forwarders from, um, that are all reviewed, um, that are all audited from us before that you can trust. So let's look at how, it's, um, how it works. Uh, only th 30 seconds on this. Um, 
only uh, re uh, reputable forwarders are allowed into the marketplace, and and we gonna we gotta track them from time to time. Um, and um, if they do not meet our our own standards, then uh, we are switching these forwarders um, off ourselves to prevent that you have a negative experience. Um, after basically putting in basic search details, uh, the dimensions, the weight from where to where. Um, You'll get multiple options and can check throughout the through the quotes to select the best one. The best one is not always the cheapest one. Look at the reviews, look at the transit time, um, look at also where they where they're located. You might prefer someone that's closer to your factory in China, or you might uh, prefer a forwarder that's in the U.S. where you have closer communication with. So we all offer this on our website, um, and then once you selected it, um, you can book and manage your shipment right through Freightos on our site. So the screenshot on the slide is where you manage your shipment. You see here um, the orders placed, verified, picked up, everything is here, and you can upload then the key paperwork, meaning the commercial invoice, the packing list, we will send you a power of attorney if you like us to do customs clearance, and then um, if you have, uh, if you need it for your shipment, also the certificate of origin. So everything can be done here. And last but not least, that's what I just mentioned. Now we are a 24/7 team to fight your battles. Chat with us. We are on the uh, website. You can check it out. Uh, check it out right now. Ship.freightos.com, and um, there is a little button on the bottom right where you can chat with us um, on a live chat. Um, again, please bear uh, with us tomorrow and Friday um, as Irma might give us a little bit um, of a delay, uh, but otherwise we are there for you um, and can take care of any questions that you have. So this was a little bit what I had. Um, hopefully I didn't rush through too much and um, now I would like to open the stage for any questions and hand back to our beautiful and wonderful Leora. Well, thank you very much, Philip, for that. Um, that was some excellent advice. I know that I think a lot to learn, to be sure, and I'm glad to know that peak season does not spell doom um, if you know the right steps to take. So as Philip said, we'll now open up the floor to questions. Um, you can continue to submit questions on the questions tab on your dashboard. Um, I will pass them on to Philip and um, you know, we'll take the next 10, 15 minutes uh, to get through as many questions as we can. If we miss you, then I apologize and um, we'll, uh, we will try to get back to them online. So the first question um, is very relevant specifically to what Philip had been saying about Hurricane Irma. How will Hurricane Irma impact importing for the next couple of days. Um, also, we had uh, last week Harvey with Houston. Are we going to be seeing any delays um, uh, along? I'm adding the Harvey part. The question was about Irma, but are we going to be seeing any delays uh, due to these hurricanes, not just from Fredos, um, though we are sending our best wishes to Philip and the team there? All right, yeah, um, uh, definitely there will be delays. You saw it already with Harvey um, that uh, that you have delays. Um, however, they are not of um, not substantial. Um, so by substantial, I mean they're probably less than approximately 10 days. Um, uh, I mean the the ports are usually very well prepared for these instances. I mean I I don't predict anything with uh, Irma. It looks a little scary what's what's happening out there, but um, uh, it is not that will be locked off for for several months in case, uh, just in case there is a major infrastructure um, uh, damaged. Um, uh, the, the, the shipping lines are rerouting uh, the ships now, for example, in case of Harvey, um, they are rerouting the Houston area shipments. Um, at least they did it uh, this week. I'm not sure if they're continuing still this last week. Um, everything to Latin America is going through Miami. Um, everything from the transatlantic is going through um, uh, through the East Coast ports, Savannah, Charleston, um, and uh, the same from from Asia. You have basically Atlanta as a rail a rail ramp. You have da Dallas as a rail ramp um, for for anything that w was in this uh, in this area. Um, so so uh, there there is enough infrastructure in the United States to reroute in case of these instances. Got it, thanks. Again, just a reminder, the questions tab on the side, I'm seeing a couple of questions come in and want to make sure we don't miss any. So if you haven't seen it, there's also the chat uh, and you can chat and I can ask the questions that way. Uh, the next question that came in is, what is the latest date for air shipments to ship from China in time for holiday season? 
Yeah, so uh, plan for approximately um, with a big uptill delivery for about 10 days, um, independent where you're going to with the major metropolitan areas. So let's assume if you uh, want to be in time for um, for for uh, Black Friday. Black Friday is relatively early this year. Um, so um, just looking at my calendar uh, and that I have the right dates. I think Black Friday is this this year. Um, on the 24th of November, so basically I think the co hardest cutoff here is the 14th of November when latest the goods should be over. And you were thinking like why it takes only one day to fly, however, um, you know there are backups and um, big goods need to be picked up, need to be deconsolidated, so calculate with 10 days and you should be good. Awesome. Um, the next question is, at what point can they start replenishing post-holiday season inventory? And I saw another question that was, uh, what around when is peak season considered over? So I guess those are, are sort of related. Yeah, peak season is, is basically over. Um, I mean, we, de we determine peak season majorly by um, the rates. Um, we, the rates are basically an indicator of demand and supply. Um, so um, usually the, the ocean freight rates are dropping at the beginning of November. Uh, reason why is because it's uh, it's relatively late then, uh, or mid-November, relatively late to bring in goods via ocean into the United States. You will miss uh, the majority of the season. Um, air freight will rather um, drop um, just after the holidays um, or just before around this time. So. Um, okay. Uh, when you when you're thinking about like you need something to replenish that's not peak season impacted or retail impact impacted, then rather wait for um, after the after the holidays uh, in air freight and ocean freight. Uh, wait uh, well into like wait for the first week um, in December. Uh, what I mean is like wait well into the holiday season. So the first week of December, if the rates are coming down, you see that you can then replenish. Got it. Sorry for that interruption. My uh, my mic stopped. Um, okay, someone else asked a question, not specifically about peak season, but um, something that I know uh, Fredos can help with. So I'll pass it on about shipping Amazon, um, and wanted to know how it works if you're shipping to multiple Amazon fulfillment centers. And coupled with it, is it less expensive to uh, ship by truck using freight forwarding services or to use the Amazon UPS rates? Not peak season specific, but I know that uh, Philip knows that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, there there is a little bit of peak season in here. Um, the reason why is that um, in peak season, I recommends to use the functionality in Amazon Seller Central to only ship to one location and then have uh, Amazon uh, repositioning. It's the repos now I have the word again. The repositioning program. Um, the reason why it's it's usually cheaper than you ship to one location and then have Amazon re uh, reposition your product. Um, they can do it more efficiently than actually you can do it. Um, if you cannot send it straight to, um, if you cannot s send it straight to Amazon, um, uh, but you need to, you need to have the goods, um, um, you need to have the goods prepared, uh, labeled, and pelletized. Um, then UPS, Amazon UPS, uh, uh, is usually a little bit better during the. Uh, during the season, uh, during peak season, the reason why is that UPS doesn't require um, uh, doesn't require um, an appointment uh, at Amazon. Well, a lot of like uh, LTL truck providers do. Okay, thank you. Um, next is someone asked, how long in advance should someone contact the freight forwarder um, and make the booking if the exact date from the factory isn't known? If like, for example, the factory says it might be ready on September 12th, um, is there some sort of cutoff date? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a very harsh cutoff date that basically um, in ocean shipping, uh, 20, 48 hours before the uh, the uh, the vessel departure um, goods usually need to be in the in the port. Um, then it usually takes a few days for preparation of the of the paperwork. Uh, I mean, 48 hours truly, you you miss the vessel. Um, uh, what we recommend is that you make your booking about um, one to two weeks early. Uh, what we do at Freitas, at least, we do we offer you some convenience that if the goods are still valid, while well, when you're booking, we keep the goods valid for 30 days. So. Um, uh, feel free to book, and then we keep the rates at a at a level. Um, 
and 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 so one to two weeks at least um, you should have, and uh, then you're not rushing. There's a lot of like back and forth still, um, which you wouldn't assume when you're shipping the first time, especially with paperwork between the factory and the fall water. Good. Um, okay, another good question. Is it usually cheaper to arrange FOB from the seller to their port or get it done, or to do it with Xworks and take care of it uh, from pickup at facility through to delivery at my business? Um, specifically through Fredos, but I think it's a good question in general. And if Phil, maybe you want to just very say briefly for the newbies um, what FOB and XWorks are. Yeah, FOB is freight on board, which means that the factory is paying everything truly up to board of the ship, of the ship or of the plane. I mean, obviously they can't bring it there, but uh, what are the three elements that the factory then pays in China? A is uh, they pay the trucking to the port or the airport. B they pay for export customs clearance, and C they pay for all the documentation, terminal handling at origin. So you only pay basically from departure of the vessel or the the port for FOB. X works is that you pay from the ramp um, at factory and you have the uh, risk also with this that meaning that in the moment the pallet is moved from the factory's dock into the truck dock um, you're responsible for paying and 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 uh, taking the risk of it we always recommend that X works you get um, more visibility to it to, to it um, so you have more control over the goods however at FOB shipments the factories in China very often have better and cheaper modes to transport the goods than um, larger full waters, so um, uh, always play around with this. Easily come to Freitos, you can put in FOB port uh, and then check what the rates are and X works. Compare the two, then to ask the factory what they're offering you for X, for basically X works price to FOB price, and then you know uh, what is actually better. Uh, great, thank you. Very helpful answer. Um, another good question. Um, we spoke a lot about. Uh, delivery from China to the US, um, are there any delays for China to Europe? Yes, I mean, same is same with uh, China to the U.S. The same accounts to Europe. Um, there is close to close to no difference. Um, and 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 uh, yeah, I'm thinking through what we just said. Um, there is truly it, it's it's the same rules apply um, uh, apply to Europe. Okay. Um, getting a lot of good questions. I apologize in advance. I know we're not going to be able to get them all if we want to stick to our cutoff time, but I'll ask a couple more. Someone asked if um, if there would be an effect with customs, uh, anything that customs might be affected during peak season um, in terms of delays and costs. So the first answer is no, the second yes. So what's first the no is, is that um, uh, that um, a good 90% over 90% of the goods um, that are imported into the United States um, are processed through customs electronically and US customs will actually never see your goods. Um, so most of this is done in, in through algorithms um, and, and there, sh there is no delay. Um, why did I say yes? The reason is if um, there is a customs inspection, um, then it usually takes um, um, a good amount of time until the goods are released. So in order to prevent this, um, you need to have, um, you need to understand what the, uh, what your HGS code is, that's the harmonized tariff system code that describes exactly what your goods are. Um, so um, your factory knows this and you should tell this the fact, uh, the, your fall water so that your fall water can directly file for customs entry with the right and specific um, uh, HGS code. This is very, very important. If your goods, and we have a, another webinar on this, um, if you feel free to, to watch this, um, about, um, uh, about any restrictions on importing. If you're importing sunglasses, have, um, you need to have an FDA license for this or FDA clearance. Um, and and um, so there are lots of restrictions. So better Better have all the done uh, stuff done before. Um, nail your factory on what exactly um, you need uh, for exporting uh, from them, um, or what they are preparing for exporting, um, and then there shouldn't be any more delays. Um, so um, preparation is 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 key, especially during peak season. Awesome. All right, we're around. I don't want to keep people too late, so I'm just going to ask uh, maybe one more question. If if you guys want to try to submit, if I catch one that I think is, you know, really must must be asked, then I'll try to get it in. But um, this one also uh, looked important. Just regarding your the slide about splitting up, he asked kind of a two part question. One is for splitting up modes. If, what's the easiest way to sort of run the math and figure out 
um, kind of the cost benefit of shipping part of your goods on air. Um, and the second is if there is an additional cost to split up your bill of lading, your bills of lading. Yeah, there is additional cost for splitting up the bill of lading. Um, when you search for uh, the the shipment um, on Freitos and you click on um, basically on the on the tile that we present there, um, then you see the different uh, line items. And one line item says documentation, bill of lading, um, and this may basically then two or three times depending on how much you split it up. Um, there isn't really like I'm saying you should send two thirds by air and one third by ocean. This would be to generalize. What we usually say is that everything, um, uh, it's the it's basically the it's it's the hundred thousand um, hundred and thousand rule. So everything up to like a uh, hundred pounds um, ship it with express. Everything up to a thousand pounds ship it via uh, via ocean uh, via air. Everything over a thousand pounds ship it via ocean. That's very very general. Uh, but if you split anything up and you want to send stuff ahead via air, um, then bring it between hundred and a thousand pounds. Something up in between this. That's the most economical way to ship it by air. Awesome. And I'm going to leave one more with you with one more question, which I'm going to be honest and say this Fredos related, but it is an important Fredos question, and so I want Philip to be able to answer it. Someone is shipping for the first time and wants to know if he should get an independent customs broker or if he can get a broker with Fredos. And the answer, Philip, is? Ha, well, this is an easy pass. Um, so <laughs> so um, all freight forwarders on, on uh, Fredos are offering customs clearance, especially if you're shipping the first time. Do not get your separate customs broker. Um, work, uh, offer the uh, order of the customs brokerage from the freight forwarder itself. It's, it's basically the same amount. You're not saving any money, um, and the paperwork is handled within the same company. So um, do not get a separate customs broker. And I'll add to that and say not only that, but you can actually also buy a customs bond through Fredos. Um, you know, the only customs cost we can't cover is the one that no one independently can cover, which is the actual duties themselves, because they're only calculated when the goods reach the port. But customs brokerage and customs bond you can arrange on our site. Um, and I think, oh, I just got one more question. Let's see. Oh, it was a thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, I think that covers it. I think it's all we have time for. We already kept you a little bit over what we promised. Um, so thank you, everyone, for your participation and your excellent questions. Uh, we knew this would be a popular topic, and you did not disappoint. Uh, we recorded the webinar. We'll email to all of you early next week so that you can refer back at any time. Um, and we are also available for questions went the wrong way, um, on the site or through email or phone. Um, Philip can be reached at philip.fredos.com, and the whole team can be reached on fredos.com, specifically ship.fredos.com is the marketplace, and our whole team is available to chat with you there. Um, a big, big thank you to Philip for the great advice. He uh, is putting off hurricane prep uh, to talk to you about peak season. That is how important it is. So um, a big, big thank you to him, and thank you to all of you for joining us. Have a great day, and smooth shipping.